All right, yesterday you had your state of the state, and a takeaway that I had was, was kind of your first sales pitch to legislators for this $4 billion package. Yeah. How did it go? What feedback are you getting yet on this, on this new idea? Positive, uh, and I, we've had very positive comments from legislators. Obviously, it's a new idea to them. They're gonna to wanna to look at it, but fundamentally, I think there's enormous uh, desire and commitment by this legislature to really take a bite out of homelessness and act this year. And I think that appetite, that recognition that this is a crisis, and also a recognition that it won't get better unless we take major steps, I think there's a broad recognition of that in the legislature. So I feel very positive coming out of yesterday uh, about this. And so uh, I think ultimately the, the way things get done in the legislature is people want them to get done. And people in the state of Washington, it is unacceptable to have people living in squalor in our parks, in our, in our school grounds, on our, on our roadways. That's just not acceptable to the people of the state of Washington, and they want action on it. And I think there's also broad recognition in the legislature that this is not a self-correcting situation. It's not going to get better unless we take bold action. And as you pointed out, it's not as if we haven't spent a lot of money on this issue. Every year, yep. it, it, we've, we've increased spending. There are people who are saying, why should we give him the authority to write a $4 billion check if the billion that we've already spent isn't working? What do you say? The saying? fact is, it is working. It is moving people out of homelessness. It is getting people to get off of drugs. It is working to get people the mental health treatment they need. It is building housing. It's just not doing it at the scale we need. So basically, we have had so many people moving into our state that we're not building housing for those people. And when those people come in, frankly, a lot of high paid people as well, which is a good thing, but then they, they squeeze out, they compete for rents, they drive up rents, they drive up housing <coughs> prices, and then people who are at the lower end of the pyramid can't afford rent. That dynamic is happening faster than we're building houses. So we have to run faster. Uh, we're running in the right direction, but we need to run faster. And that means we have to have a scale of building that will make up for this housing crisis. Look, this is a housing crisis. We've had a million people come into the state in the last decade or so, but we've only built about 340,000 homes. Well, when you have a million people move into your state and you only build 300,000 homes, you know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a housing <coughs> crisis. You're gonna get a homelessness crisis. And the only way out of that is to build. We have to build housing. And so we have multiple ways we're proposing to do that. By the way, it's not just this one expenditure of state dollars. <clears throat> it's also increasing the ability to permit housing so we can get it built. You need a permit to build a house to make that faster, less expensive, so we can hold down housing prices. It's also changing some of our zoning laws so that we have more areas in our homes, in our cities, to actually build homes that aren't restricted. Now you can't build homes in vast swaths of our cities right now. So all of this is a package it's a package that is based on a scale of the problem, an urgency of the problem, and a recognition that we can uh, solve this. It's within our power, and we need to act. That bill comes up for hearing today, I think, ways and means? I think they have, which is a good sign, right? You're not, you're not testifying no. in favor of it. But. Uh, no, uh, but it's a good sign. I think it shows the appetite for the legislature to, uh, uh, to act on this. So uh, I am reasonably confident we're going to make real progress this year. Uh, inaction is not acceptable to the people of the state of Washington, and we need uh, uh, to show what we, what we are in, in the state of Washington, which is a group that's not going to accept homelessness on a long-term basis. Let's talk about the drug possession <clears throat> debate. Mm -hmm. We all know that that needs to be dealt with by July. Mm -hmm. Do you support full legalization? Should drug possession be an arrestable offense? Where, where do you fall in that? In that debate, at this well, point. I don't. I don't support total decriminalization of uh, decriminalization of hard drugs, and I'll tell you why. I think our focus needs to be to pr promote and enable people to get the chemical addiction treatment that they need. That does work. Look, it's tough for people to break addictions, but we are having success when people get into treatment. Uh, we have this medically assisted treatment protocol now that's been very successful to wean people off of, of hard uh, illegal drugs. So these systems can work. We need to promote them. We need to enable them. But there is a segment of people that need more than encouragement. They need a, a push and having some criminal sanction to say, look, you need to get into treatment to help you and us 
solve this problem. And if you don't, there's some potential criminal sanction out there for you. Uh, that should be the, the, the prod, not the first approach. And so I think total decriminalization is not the way to go. Now we need a way to, again, our first goal is to get people into treatment. Break this addiction of addiction, stop the, the, the squalor they're living in, that should be our goal, and I, I think we can come up with something this year to do it. The assault weapon ban, so-called assault weapon ban on sales, it's come up I think six times since you've been in office. Hasn't, hasn't passed. Democrats have a stronger majority this, this time around. Is this the year you saw the reaction yesterday, Republicans don't like the idea. Is this the year that that gets passed? I think there's a good chance of that. Look, uh, every time there's a shooting, every time we see our school children shot, I saw it at my old school that I went to, Ingram High School. Every time this is, people are now more willing that we have to act. Inaction is not uh, acceptable to us against gun violence. So the assault weapon bill is just one of the things I think we need. I I'm very committed uh, to getting a bill through to say, look, you ought to have some basic safety training when you buy a gun. I think this is one of the very important things we need to do. Other states, Connecticut, have had success with these programs in reducing gun violence. I think we ought to do that. We expect you have some basic understanding of the safety protocols around guns. And responsible gun owners understand that. So I am really uh, uh, going to uh, push this bill this year. As you know, I've been a long supporter of the assault weapon ban. I actually provided one of the pivotal votes, one of the last votes in 1994 that passed it on a federal level, and it was successful while it was in operation for 10 years. Then the Republicans uh, took it off the books, and look at the mass shootings we've had. So that's one of the three bills I think we need to get done. Will those bills be constitutional? There are some who say restricting or requiring more training is, is going too far. Would it pass that test? I think so. If you look at uh, even this Supreme Court, which you know I've had some disagreements with, even with this Supreme Court, I believe these will be seen as common sense, reasonable approaches. Uh, the safety training issue, look, we have safety training for all kinds of things, Dr you know, driving a car to you know what. And so I think this has passed constitutional muster, muster. I believe it will. What's gonna happen with this airport mess? We've got these sites, <clears throat> nobody likes them. SeaTac, even this morning, has got another, another issue they're dealing with, not necessarily just based on our growth, but this area, as you know, is growing but SeaTac can't grow much more. What are we going to do? Are we going to let this growth pass without doing anything? Something needs to happen. What, what do you hope to accomplish this session with this, this airport sighting? Well, I think I actually watched a hearing on this the other, the other night while I was waiting for my speech. And uh, I think it was interesting. I think legislators expressed a lot of questions that need to be answered before we can take any, any next steps. So I suspect what you're going to see is people having more questions getting answered, particularly on uh, some alternatives that we may not have considered. So I suspect that's a route that's going to happen this year. Okay. You would maybe support doing another study? That's It's possible. Okay. There, there's a lot of questions that remain unanswered at the moment. Learning loss is not something that uh, is going away. Uh, schools are back in. Uh, hybrid schools are, are, are pretty minimal now, but we've, we've seen more and more studies saying that communities, children suffered, especially communities of color. Uh, low-income districts. Superintendent Rakedahl is asking for a lot more money to deal with that. D does your budget provide enough money to, to get us to where we have to deal with, with that learning loss, that generation of students that, that lost a lot the last couple of years? Well, we have been very committed to education. As you know, we've had the largest infusion of dollars uh, in Washington state history while I've been a governor, but we're increasing that. This year, I'm proposing an additional $3 billion, $3 billion in additional funds for schools that are proposed in my budget. That's on top of the money that we put in last session, particularly for the mental health uh, supports for our young people that have been stressed during COVID, uh, for more counselors, uh, more therapists, more you know, uh, mental health professionals of, of one sort or another. So we did that last year, we wanna continue that. We also, something I, I wanna mention that's I think very important is that uh, I'm proposing uh, a significant increase in, in funding for our special education students, our students that have additional needs. Right now we have a cap on the ability of school districts to provide for our students that have uh, complex issues they have to deal with and I've uh, suggested raising that cap so we can help these kids with some specific uh, difficulties. But I think with that additional $3 billion uh, we've provided a raise for our educators as well. 
So I think that's a significant investment. And uh, again, I want to appreciate the educators who worked so hard and diligently through this uh, to help our students. We're almost out of time, so I want to get more of a speed round here. If you can keep your answers, <laughs> yes luck. or no, or we'll Good see. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, next week, sounds like there will be a bill to lower the blood alcohol level from 0.08 to 0.05 for drunk driving. Do you support that idea? Uh, I haven't looked at it in detail, but I'm inclined to move in that direction. I've worked for years. I cut my teeth as a prosecutor prosecuting uh, impaired drivers. I still believe there's more work to be done. I'm inclined to support it, but I have to look at the details. Senator Kaiser brought up a bill yesterday to prohibit uh, pot testing, marijuana testing <clears throat> for new employees. Is that something that you're willing to say we, we can no longer, we no longer have to have that with, with the world we live in now? Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at the bill, so I have to get back to you on it. Okay. Uh, adding car theft to the list of crimes where police can pursue someone. You know that's going to come up. <clears throat> Do you like that idea? Should, should police be able to chase after a car theft? If the legislature wants to go in that, I'd, I'd be acceptable to that, with that change. Right. We've heard about workforce shortages. There are thousands of employees who could be working for the state if you didn't have a vaccine mandate. Will you ever see a time where we could lift the COVID-19 vaccine mandate? When it, it, yeah, if it never, if it doesn't make sense <laughs> at some point, it makes sense right now to continue this though. We wanna have healthy state workers. We wanna have state workers that don't get COVID and don't show up to work for a week or two. And so we have found this has been uh, helpful in that regard. This is a continuing threat to our health. We wanna have a stable, healthy workforce. So right now it continues uh, for the foreseeable future. Now someday, if, it, if this changes the character of this, perhaps we can uh, remove it, but at the moment, no. And we're not finding this to actually be an impediment to hiring people. This has not been the problem for us. Uh, we have challenges just like the rest of the world from airports uh, to shipping lines to police agencies. We've had this great withdrawal from employment. Everybody's uh, seen that across the state of Washington. It's not our vaccine mandate that makes this a national problem. New Jersey's not having problems hiring people in their police forces because of our vaccine mandate, okay? This is, a, this is a national situation. So I don't think it's a major problem. What is a problem is we don't want people to get sick from COVID. Two more questions. The State Transportation Commission is going to recommend <clears throat> shifting away from the gas tax and going to a pay by mile system, the road usage charge. Controversial idea. Do you, do you like that idea? Does the state need to find a new way because the gas tax isn't cutting it anymore? I'm not proposing changes to, uh, to financing our transportation system. We've had a significant injection of funds simultaneously while fighting climate change. I'm really pleased we're leading the country in that. I want legislators to focus on that this session to implement that, make sure it gets done. By the way, you didn't ask me about this, but we have work to do to make sure that our climate efforts succeed. We have passed the best climate change fighting policies in the United States. We should be very proud of that, proud of that in the state of Washington. It's provided billions of dollars for transportation and other uh, purposes, but we need to implement it. We have to get those solar sites uh, sited. We have to get transmission lines so we can move solar power from a lot in Eastern Washington to where we need it in Western Washington. So we need some changes in our laws to be able to do that in a timely fashion. We need to implement those measures so we can actually get these things done. But you don't think going to a mile, pay I'm by I'm not proposing system? that this session of the legislature to, to take any action in that regard. Okay, last question. All of a sudden it's 2023, 2024, it's knocking at our door. Will you run again for a, a fourth term? Will you look at Washington DC again? What can we expect from you in 2024? You can fully, with confidence, accept that I'll make the right decision at the right time. <laughs> but this is not the right time to be thinking about that, and I have not given it serious consideration. I'm focused on a great session, and I'm actually optimistic about this session. Look, this is my 11th session as governor, and I'm probably more excited about this than day one. We got some big things we can do this year. We can attack homelessness. We can improve mental health. We can continue our efforts against you know, crime hiring more police officers, getting better mental health, having action against gun violence. All of those are within our grasp this session. So I'm really excited about this. That's what I'm thinking about. Very good. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Do well.